Hi, Mr. Supreme. Thank you for being here. Today, I want to talk about excuses, y'all. I'm not going to be here long, but um, I want to talk about excuses that we make in our physical reality. And when I'm talking to you, I look at you all as if you're my reflection. So I'm really, it's just like me leaving a little note in my, in my diary. Because today I struggled with making an excuse for even doing this particular live, you know, being consistent on my live. You know, I've been speaking for, for a long time, years. I started off on Facebook and I had like maybe, I think I had three or four pages there, about 90,000 people over there. But I deleted my Facebook because I wanted to break from it all, you know? It's pretty cool to inspire other people, but sometimes you just wanna, you, you just wanna, you know, do you and have your me time. That's why my name here on TikTok is God is just be. I just really came here just to be. <laughs> I wasn't really gonna talk. I was done kind of like with speaking because really when you become conscious, you know that everything is perfect and everything is working out, you know, and there's balance of good versus evil, so to speak, of sleep people versus woke people, so to speak. <laughs> and so you just really just want to go with the flow and you really just want to be but me leaving this little note in my diary as i speak to you all with all my reflections i wanted to talk about excuses today because sometimes we make excuses in our life we make excuses for like becoming conscious we make excuses of why we're not going to eat healthy just yet you know we make excuses about you know why we gonna stay on a job that we don't even like that's not our passion we make excuses about why we don't want to work out you know but here's the thing that we should understand about the excuses that we make <clears throat> that the excuses that we make is really because we we still want to be in that program that old program is really just your mind playing tricks on you to keep you stagnated in your journey is something that we all must deal with because all of this here is mental in the physical reality all is mine <laughs> and so the thing about those excuses is don't allow the excuses to stop you from doing that very thing that you love to do you know meanwhile you you still maybe be going to a job that you don't really love that's really not your passion make time for you in your in your life the things that make you happy and really and truly to be honest with you all helping other people is really the thing that makes me happy being able to inspire other people really makes me feel good you know in life i feel like if we were all on that day where we about to time out in the physical reality it wouldn't be about oh i wish i would have did this here more at work it wouldn't be about Man, I wish I would have bought this car. It would be about, what is my legacy? What is that thing that I'm leaving behind here for other people? You know, am I fulfilled? Was I happy? Did I enjoy the journey? Did I love hard? Did, 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 did I inspire somebody? Hmm. So that's why I wanted to talk about excuses today. Because... <laughs> I've been through a lot in my physical reality. You know, people look at me, they go, oh, I just may have just stumbled on consciousness and I had it easy, especially because I don't like to talk about the old shitty stories no more. But it hasn't been so-called easy. I've been through a lot mentally, physically, financially, emotionally. But here's the thing for me, if I were to time out today, right now, I'll feel at peace, I'll feel at ease knowing that I have touched so many people's lives. Knowing that I have left so many things behind. <laughs> I feel good about that. And the reason why I was able to do that thus far is because I don't make excuses. And if you knew right now what was going on in my physical reality, you would probably, some of you will probably be like, oh yeah, yeah, take today off or whatever, you know, you got a lot going on, it's okay, but I still pressed on to just to come on this live and be consistent and share my journey with somebody because just this here piece could probably help one person and if I can do that each day, if I could just help one person along their journey, I feel good about that. 
you know, the most beautiful part of my life is when people circle back and tell me how much I've inspired them, you know, whether they email me through a consultation, a comment or whatever. And so I want to share that part. Maybe you're not in this position where I am, where you consult with other people and inspire other people. But still in your life, you leave an impact on somebody. Whether it is a person at the grocery store, your family or whatever. So I'm encouraging you to stop making excuses and shine your light is what I'm saying. Shine your light for the world to see because see, when we become conscious beings, we, we're supposed to have that all seeing eye that's inside of us. You know how in the biblical text it says, if thy eye be single, then that body should be full of light. Well, if your body is a full of light, that means you are vibrating at a frequency. <laughs> you are the so-called chosen one. And so now your light is shining so bright that you could inspire other people. Even when you think that you dim, even when you think you tired, just because you have that light, you still at a higher frequency than, than the, than the so-called sleep tired being in the physical reality. So I encourage you to shine your light anyway. I encourage you to press on anyway. I encourage you to work out when you don't feel like it anyway. You just energy, frequency, and vibration. When you get in the momentum of working out, you're going to feel better. When you get in the men momentum of inspiring somebody, it's going to give you more energy. Just, just sometimes we just have to get out of the program of thinking, oh, it don't matter if I don't do it. Oh, I could skip the workout today. Oh, I'm going to just stay on this here job and I ain't going to worry about my little passion. Maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't meant to be. We'll make up all kinds of excuses, but the world is waiting for you. Your universe, God, and your kingdom, just like we all have this simulated little environment based upon our subconscious mind. I have mine over there, over here, and you have yours over there. You just came over here to visit me and mine momentarily because we vibe on the same frequency because through thought that there was something here that you needed to hear. But people in your kingdom are waiting on you to shine your light. They're waiting on you to inspire them. <laughs> They're waiting on you, God, to wake up and, 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 and start with that dream. To share that gift, you know, the gift that you said that you was going to come forth to bring in the physical reality before you got here. Yeah, that gift that's embedded in you. Yeah, they, they're waiting on you to show them that gift because they need that gift from you. They do. They do. You know, before I started my journey, there was this guy that told me, he said, there will be people in the physical reality who are gonna hate you uncontrollably. But don't worry about them, press on, because for everybody that hate you uncontrollably, there's gonna be others who are gonna love you unconditionally. Do it for the ones who love you unconditionally. Let love be the reason why that you keep on doing what you're doing, because at your best, you are love. At your best, that's part of the gift that you came to bring. Whether it is a gift like mine of self-expression, it's still love because that means your throat chakra is attuned to a love frequency. And this is why people will ask you, where you from? <laughs> it's something about your voice. Because it be attuned to, to the love frequency. Whether it is the gift of seeing, clairvoyancy, They'll, they'll, they'll admire maybe your eyes. <laughs> yeah. If it's the gift of maybe dancing, mm -hmm. they'll admire your rhythm. They'll tell you how smooth you are. But it's all of these gifts that we have to bring. They are tuned to a frequency that has enough energy inside of it, embedded in it, the gift itself, to wake up others. To inspire others, to put a smile on other people's face. So let's collectively stop making excuses. <laughs>
that's what I am doing in my journey. Vowing to stop making excuses for my passion. Like I said, when I was on when I was on Facebook, I just got to a point where I just, you know, I was just doing it on three pages and I was just 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 kind of like tired. That's why I feel more comfortable just having TikTok setting a set date of Mondays at normally I'll be here at eight, it's seven this time. Set time Mondays at eight. Don't want to overdo myself because I'm right now in a physical reality embarking on one of my major um, manifestations that I'm really, really proud of. So I'm making really a lot of shifts in my physical reality, but I still want to make time for that which is really important to me and that I'm really, really passionate about. I don't want to make excuses there. Because if I get into the momentum of doing it at one time, it's almost like my mental has won. The old program has won. When you give in to that weakness, so to speak, that weak-minded thought is what I'm saying here. It's like the, your mind and played the trick on your congratulations. Now you're going back into another season of the program of the old way of giving up. The old way of throwing in the towel. The old way of forgetting about that which is important to you. The old way of still keeping the shitty diet, the old way of still thinking the shitty thoughts. <laughs> this is this is this is something that you we always. I'm still a student in my journey. This is something that we always are gonna face. It's like you're never really gonna graduate, so to speak, from the spiritual journey. We're never really gonna get it because there's really no it to get because there's still always expansion. Because the universe or the totality of God becomes greater and greater. And so there's always going to be a lesson to learn. There's always going to be something to win. And so I talk about mental and all is mind so much because it's very important. The mind, the mental is going to take you everywhere from manifestations to, to your awakening, through your dreams, through any type of gift or, or journey that you own is always going to be mental. So you might as well get your mind right now, whether it is on something as simple as eating right, exercising, being committed to your passion, starting that business, um, manifestation, whatever it is, you might as well get your mind right now because you can always be dealing with your mind. You know how in biblical text they say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Those principalities that in those rulers of darkness that we wrestle against is going to be in your mind. Because <laughs> really and truly nothing is out here. Really and truly you are alone in your little kingdom. And everything that you see is manipulated energy that you created through thought. So if you don't get this mind right now, <laughs> you're going to be suffering with it. You're going to re rinse and repeat over and over again until you get the mind right on something. So you might as well start with something. Even if it's just, just your children. Even if it's just your diet. Even if it's just choosing to wake up at a certain time each day, it's something that you have to deal with as far as, 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 far as disciplining the mind. Because it is so important in our journey. So let us collectively, and I'm talking to myself when I say this here, stop making excuses. And just be great. And make time for your greatness. Make time to shine your light. <laughs> Let me see. Let me look at this here. I wanted to get that little part out. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. Yes, we are all, all reflections. Hi, Xanax Sound. I like that name. We are reflections. You are right. You are so right. Hey, Dream Drums. Thank you for being here. Self-sabotage. That's where it really be. And then we turn around and years have passed. We turn around and years have passed and now we have regrets. Don't live your life with regrets. Do what makes you feel good. Whatever it is that makes you feel good, do that. If you're not happy with your body, fix that thing and, and, and talk to your body. Love on your body. And tell your body, no, 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 we're going to eat right today. No, 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 you're going to be sexy. <laughs> no, 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 you're going to get some muscles. Because really and truly, that's what all working out is. It's really just mine. <clears throat> you are creating that through thought. You could actually really mentally speak to your body, speak to the cells of your body and tell your muscles to grow. It's all mine. It's really not the doing like we think. <laughs> this, this game of life is really mental. 
Hi. Oh, hey, Miss Bien Soul. Thank you for being here, babe. Hi, B Big Rita. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Hey. Hi, Helen King. I love your page. Thank you for joining. Hey, Marcus. I love you too, babe. But yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you all. Light body activated. Definitely. And that's how you activate it. Through the mind. Through the thoughts. It all starts from the thoughts. So start with something. I don't know where you are in your journey. I just mentioned a couple of things where, where I came from, you know, with diet, with consciousness, you know. But start somewhere. If you just start. Start somewhere. Let something be it. Even if it's just saying no to sugar. Be disciplined with something. Because the spiritual journey is, is just that. You know, they got a lot of people, you know, pumping their fists, talking about they woke and, you know, and paying attention to a lot of um, conspiracy theories and, and Black Lives Matter type of stuff with killing and shooting. And, but it ain't about that. When you wake up, it's about your inner man. It ain't about the things that are outside of you. The only reason why you're looking at the shitty things that are outside of you is because the inside of you is just that shitty. The only reason why you could see that is because the inside of you has some chaos inside of it. So when you wake up, it ain't time to go out and go into another religion. It ain't time to go out and look at all of the conspiracy theories. It ain't time to go out there and talk about round earth, flat earth. Who cares? Really? When you wake up, it is time for you to go in that darkness, that chaos that's inside of here and sort this out. As within, so without on earth as it is in heaven, that chaos out there is because it's in here. It came from in here. That's the only reason why you could see it. So I encourage you. I'm telling you, I don't come here for attention. <laughs> I don't come here, you know, for no other reason but to help my reflections. You know? To leave something behind. That's going to help somebody. And if it's just one person, I'm okay with that one person. I don't like calling that attention anyway. I come here to speak from my heart so that the frequency that I'm on can penetrate your heart and activate something inside of you to bring out the greatness inside of you. And that's what this, all, this, this whole thing called life, this whole thing called the world is happening through you. And so we got to get give time out for the excuses and be real about our journey. Time out about all of the negative things that are ha so-called happening. We're in a new age. <laughs> Gone are those old days. It's time for you to wake up and realize you're God. It's time for the greatness that's been embedded in you into your DNA to be activated. That dormant junk DNA has been activated in you. It's time to get that thing rolling. It's time. <laughs> the great sleep, that, that moment is over. So what are you going to leave behind? We want to see that. What are you going to awaken to? When are you going to clear that chaos? What are you going to be consistent about? <sighs> oh my God, you're so beautiful. Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you, Stacey. Thank you. I appreciate that. Light must remain apart from light. They love each other. Hi, Easy Rebel. Thank you for sharing that. That's so beautiful. Dark is the missing part. Don't let the dark sneak up on you. Definitely. Definitely. It's all two-sided, but you know, sometimes in your journey, the darkness does come because you you purging from it you know if it's inside of you that chaos and i'm not saying the darkness is evil like you know some people may believe it's just like maybe disorder you know it's like chaos but here's the thing we supposed to be learning how to see in the dark how to put that chaos in order in our life because the chaos stem from within us you remember that movie? They had a movie, uh, Bird Box, I'm reminded of. You know how the people in the movie Bird Box, they would see the darkness and they would die. They couldn't handle the darkness. They couldn't handle the the the, the depth of it. You know, they freak out when they saw it. And they just, one lady, I remember in the movie, she started beating her head up against the wall and, and bleeding. 
But here's the thing. <laughs> that darkness is that part of you that a lot of us are afraid to explore. You see, that chaos is really deep up in there. It's really chaotic in there and it could be very scary, but you have to learn how to see in the darkness. That's what your light is all about. That's what your, your first eye is all about. If that eye be single, then the whole body full of light. So that means your whole body should be able to see in that darkness. And you shouldn't be afraid of that darkness. <laughs> because we're both sides. The darkness and the light. It goes with the law of polarity. The darkness and the light. For the darkness in the biblical text could not comprehend the light. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, speak the mirror ain't missing a beat right now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, babe. Thank you for motivating. Hi. Hi, Kata. Katama? Am I saying that right? Hi there. Thank you for joining. Infinite. Yes, ma'am. So amazing. I love your content. So happy for your live. Hi, Alexis. Thank you for being here, babe. I appreciate that. I really do. I admire you. Hey, brown sugar. Hey, beautiful. Thank you so much. As above, so below. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. May you find peace. Love in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, hey, Voodoo Birds. I like that name. Pew. <laughs> That's cool. New here from New Mexico. Lillian. Hi, Lillian. Thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. I'm struggling with this exact thing. Yeah. And I struggle with it too. I struggle like today. I was just saying with everybody. I struggle with it too. Just just trying to be consistent because so many things be going on in, in my life sometimes. You know, my website closed right now because... I have a lot going on, but man, you got to make time for that thing that you're really passionate about because I know this is my calling. I know this is my purpose, you know, the very thing that I am born to do and I want to be consistent with it. I don't want to have excuses because like I said earlier, I just love motivating people. I love inspiring people and there's so much of greatness inside of me and so much more that I have to share with the masses and I'm not going to give up on me, you know, cause you know, I, I make time for other things. I, I still work in uh, a corporate America environment. I make time for those things, you know, and I've done that for years in my life. And so I'm not going to cheat me. We got to get to the point where we be stingy. And we say, I'm not going to cheat me. And I'm not going to cheat the collective either because when this physical body is no more, it ain't going to be about how many ladders that I climbed in no corporate America. No, to me, for me, it's going to be how many people I inspired, how much love I felt along the way, how much love I gave, how much love I received, and that I left an imprint on people's lives. Matter of fact, I share with you all during my spiritual journey, I had a moment, and I spoke about this briefly, I had a, a moment, a shift, I will call it, where you jump into different parallels and some of you may not be there, but <laughs> but I'll share this with you and I'm hopeful that you could maybe relate to me in some way, no matter where you are in your journey. So I jumped from a, one parallel to another. And this was like, um, like a third time of awakening. Cause you know, like when you first wake up, there's like, um, it's almost like some people will have like a near death experience, so to speak. They, that's what they will, you know, describe it as like, if they were religious, they'll be like, you know, Oh, I almost died. And I went to heaven and I saw Jesus per se, like, right. Cause everybody got their own little, you know, mental and their own little hierarchy in their subconscious mind. And ain't nothing wrong with that. But for me, it was like an ascension in comparison and I remember the first time that I had one and my body lifted up off the bed. I was meditating in a meditative position on the bed and my body began to rise. And I said, no, put me down now. And I said it with an authority in my voice because of a little bit of nervous energy and, try and, being, um, and trying to be in control rather of the the, you know, the momentum that was rising me up, right? And I went back down. And then it began to happen again. And I said, put me down 
Now, I am not going anywhere. I am a mother first. Because I thought in my mental that that meant that I was about to die. You know, and I was in my house and my children were in the other, in the other room and, and I could see through the walls. I saw what they were doing. You know, they were playing their games in the room and I was like, no, he's not ready. You don't have two boys in the physical reality. And I was saying like to my higher self, no, they are not ready for this. They are not ready for me to leave them. I am a mother first, put me down. As if being a mother, you know, really gonna stop this thing, right? But in my mind, in my thought, I was saying this, that I wanted it to stop. <laughs> and so right before my eyes, like um, a picture of my oldest son came, like, an image of him came and he spoke to me. He said, Ma, I want you to go. I want you to trust it and we're gonna be okay. Because love connects us all to all things and we'll be there. Don't worry, you need to do this. And I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? And so I said, okay, but I love you. And so the picture of him moved away. Now this was re really happening in my mental, in my physical, right? The picture of him went away and I closed my eyes and I allowed the momentum to take me. I allowed my body to be lifted and I went into another parallel universe. And, and when you go to other parallel universes, you better understand that everything is happening at one time. <laughs> the so-called time is an illusion and you can hear all things. You're connected to all things. The subconscious mind is like on point. <laughs> and you could, you, you know everything pretty much. And so I was so nervous, like leaving on that particular journey. But when I went to this ascent through this ascension process and I, and I was activated, I'm trying to cut through all of the stuff in between, but I was activated. And when I got to where I was going, it was like, I went out or my, or my frequency increased so much. And then I came back down. And then when I was coming back down, like to come back, like to the physical reality, almost like as if I was, you know, how we come forth after we have a dream and we come back in the physical reality and it, it starts to dwindle away because we're going back to like 10% of our brain capacity. And when I came back, I was like, why, what's going on? Why am I going back? And I come back in the physical and there my family and my loved ones were there. Well, that happened the first time. And I hold that experience dear to me because I remember being afraid, just a little bit of leaving and wanting to be a mother. But that was like only my first time of that particular awakening. But when I got to like the third time, <laughs> When I got to the third time, there was just peace, this knowing, this, <laughs> this assurance in my heart, in my soul. And always, each time, always, it's almost like you, you look back over your life when you're about to shift to another parallel reality and you look back. And I promise you, you ain't gonna be looking back for no, no materialistic things, baby. You're going to be looking back. It's almost like you're judging yourself and you're looking back at your works. And the, the most recent one that I had, and I looked back at my works and I was like, oh, I'm good. Let's go. It was no hesitation. So this is why I'm saying what's really important here is the matters of your soul and your heart. Because when I look back, I was like, okay. And I, as a mother, I'm telling you this, as a mother, you know mothers have unconditional love for their children. And, you know, I have boys, and so it's something about the opposite sex, you know, with the daddy and the little girl or with the mother and the boys. I was like, oh, I'm okay with this. I know love connects us to all. I know that I will never be separate from them. I know if my physical body times out right now, I shall become greater. I know that I left a mark and I've touched people's lives. I'm well with this. So that's just why I'm seeing this here to you. You want to just be well up in here. You want to be well up in here. So let's not make excuses. Get to a point where when you shift to another parallel reality, and some of you might call this thing death, but I look at it because I've been in different realms before that we, 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 we don't die. 
So I don't call this thing death. I call this shift into parallel realities. We're not dying. Energy does not die. It's simply transformed, baby. And so for the person who's going to this other parallel reality, they, they are feeling no thing. They're feeling no thing because their life is moving on. It's almost like they're gradu graduating from one dimension to another. When it's time for that person to be you, you want to be able to have ease with the work that you did in your physical reality because you know how they say that, you know, we're going to be judged and your heart has to be placed upon this scale and it should be weighed against a feather. It should be as light as a feather. Who's judging that heart? That's your subconscious mind, baby, that's going to be judging that heart. We want to believe in religion that, you know, the devil going to be on this side and God going to be on that side. But really and truly, when you become conscious and learn about this spiritual walk, you realize it's you judging you. <laughs> it's you judging you. So this is why I'm saying, stop making excuses with yourself. Be easy with yourself. Be passionate with yourself and go behind that very thing that makes you feel good. Do that very thing that makes you feel good because you're going to look back at your life and you're going to determine if you're going to the next realm or if you're going to come back and rinse and repeat because that guilt going to be sitting on your heart. That regret going to sit on your heart. That worry, that excuse that you've been making for eons and eons going to be sitting right there on your heart. So it ain't going to be able to be as light as a feather because you're going to be judging yourself. That heart going to carry weight to you. And if it carries weight to you, that means you got to go back. You can't move forward with all that weight on it. You got to go back. Like, like that song, Erica Baidu. Baidu, bag lady, you going to hurt your back. Toting all them bags like that. <laughs> so you got to learn to let it go. And along with letting it go, let go of them excuses and get yourself in order so your heart can feel good. This is what this journey going to be about, baby. The matters of your heart and your mind. Woo! That was beautiful. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Awaken. Heal, evolve. I like that. Hey, Shared. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the comments just jumped. Scales got a balance. You write about that, Xanax. They got a balance. They got a balance. They got to balance with you and your thoughts about balancing them, though. Yeah. That sounds borrowed and blue. <laughs> I love the little laughs of knowing. Yeah. Hey, queens. Thanks for being here. Yes, I was there. The aliens like, <laughs> like your prayers. <laughs> you scared of the aliens. Um, not scared. I just wanted, I just wanted to stay more in physical. I thought physical for me was over. It wasn't really that I was scared because I've seen some really scary things in my journey. And I'd like to think that, I'm not saying I, I don't get nervous behind it, but I'd like to think that I'm past the scared, scary part because I've seen so many crazy, crazy things, you know, like that would have some shaking in their boots or whatever. But what I've learned about fear is that on the other side of fear becomes the greatest moments of your life, you know? I've learned to master the fear. I, I learned to tackle the fear, you know? I go into the darkness to find that light that I was talking to you all about because I have been afraid in the past and that was simply because, you know, coming out of religion and they teach you about hell and they teach you about the devil with the pitchfork. And then you watch, you know, scary movies and Freddy Krueger and things like that. Nightmare on Elm Street and all that. You know, your subconscious mind ain't never going to sleep. So you remember those things. And so, yes, nervous energy does come. And so, but all of that is coming from yourself and your mind. like. And so, yes, I have seen, I, I don't really call them aliens per se. But I guess that's what people would, would um look at them as i have seen like green little short people i have seen um you know the dark shadows like um i guess people will call them some similar to what anunnaki like giant darkness type beings 
I have seen, I have been in stores and people have, been, I have seen the depths of what's inside of other people and the darkness that's inside of other people so much so that they didn't have like eyeballs in their sockets and stuff and, and I'm just in the store making groceries and just like turning around looking and their eyeballs like gone and they're staring at me like a zombie. I have seen some scary things and I've been lifted out of my bed and I had sleep paralysis and all of these different things in my physical reality. So, mm, scared. I don't know. I get nervous, but, but like I say, when my physical body time out, you know, I'll be ready. <laughs> I'm happy with me. I'm happy with the larger part of me and the things that I've done in my physical reality. And I know that I live on. I know. I've seen it already. Nobody can tell me that no, no kind of different. I know. I know that I'm God in physical form. And I know that I have a purpose here in the physical reality to awaken up others to their higher self and to inspire others along the way. And not only to inspire others, you know, it's, it ain't just about them. It's about me still learning some things that that I came for to learn or to remember. Because really, that's what we're all doing. We forgot seemingly and we are remembering. Not only remembering through thought, but we were remembering or joining forces, so to speak, together. Because at the end of the day, collectively, we all are singing the same song. You know, whether we go into religion singing that song, whether we go into spirituality, it really doesn't matter. Whether we're white or black, whether we're rich or poor, it really doesn't matter because the totality of it all in embodies what we call God and we're singing the same song some people might seem like they're offbeat it really don't matter about that you know still the same song <laughs> they gonna catch up some people be on a little slow bus and be wanting to sleep and slumber don't want to wake up just yet and they're purposeful for that because there must be balance in the physical reality everybody ain't gonna be woke at the same time everybody not gonna rise at the same time it just ain't gonna work like that because we're governed underneath the law of polarity. So we're gonna have to have the other side. And that's okay. And that's perfect because that's still God expressing itself at a lower frequency. So, yes, I was there. Let me see. Okay. There are shadow beings, lost souls. Okay. Star Brown styles. Yeah, the shadow beings. That's what you call them, lost souls. For me, the um, yeah, I, I I would say I would agree with that. But for me, I kind of explained this here on another video. That particular encounter, it was that they were giving me some orders and instructions for my life on that encounter. And so, to to some people, it might be you know shadows and lost souls, but what mine that visited me was like guides was more like like Anunnaki type beings that visited me and they had in their hand a a, um, a, a scroll like with gold writing on it like kind of like a contract so to speak kind of share with me what I came for to do in the physical reality and I never forget that I was saying no to them my little introverted self <laughs> Going back to making them excuses. I would say no. I would say no. I didn't want to do that. Why Why are you picking me? Why me? I didn't say that I wanted to do that. And they were trying to show me or trying to remind me that I did. I was like, no. Pick somebody else. Pick somebody else. I didn't want to speak. And so, you know how on that movie, um, Ghost, I think it is. I talked about this on another video. Ghost with Whoopi Goldberg. When somebody died and little black images came off the sidewalk as if it was death coming to snatch the person who had died to bring them to supposedly hell. Well, these particular dark, um, tall, like giant energies, so to speak, it's like they stood up. It's like they came out the ground, so to speak, and they were like giants, like hoovering like over me. It's almost to like show me the authority over this situation. Like, cause my little bitty self, my little bitty energy, not in the physical form, but my little energy was saying, no, I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to come forth with my gift, so to speak, to nobody. Pick somebody else. And when them suckers stood up, 
I was like, I humbled myself and I was like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'll do it, I'm sorry. Like, they humbled me, they reminded me. And it wasn't like they were going to, you know, kill me or hurt me or whatever. But they were just really showing me the their power and the power that I stemmed from. You know, I never really had any anything... Only just one time in meditation where something was trying to like hurt me per se. And because that was because of my fears, you know, my fears of meditation coming from religion to meditation, you know, the little um, birds. I, I shared that on another video that tried to, you know, come and try to attack me while meditating that I, when I was flying in the air, like I was acting as if I was, you know, a puffy cloud. And because of my fear of meditation, that's something you got to keep in mind. These fears is the things that we create. And so that's why I'm trying to share with you, like, you know, the lost souls. Some people look at it as lost souls, but look at me. I looked at it in a positive thing. It worked out in a positive way because your thoughts is really the thing. Going back to all being mental, the thoughts is going to always be the thing that sets everything apart from another person's experience. Now, had I been afraid, these per people probably would have scared me, you know, when they stood up. But I looked at them as if they were like family. It felt like home to me. And so I had already purged out all of that fear and stuff from church in my mind that meditation was the devil and the darkness was the devil because life kind of like teach you like black things are bad, you know, like, you know, dark energy, black magic, so to speak, black people, you know, we must be chaotic. We must be the devil and this and that and the third. But I don't look at darkness like that. See, because I've been, I've been able to find the light in the darkness. And make peace with the darkness and not look at darkness as if it's chaotic. It's not chaotic for me. You know, those guys that came to speak to me, they were not chaotic to me. They humbled me and they came presenting a gift, a memory that was supposed to be embedded in me for me to remember. And so much so, they wanted me so much so to remember them that, you know, how sometimes you have a dream and you forget the dream and, you know, you... You wake up and then you coming back down to your ten percent of your brain capacity. No, and I were dumb. I had this 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 interaction with them, and I was able to remember it vividly. <laughs> After I came out of that meditation, like it was like they were just right here. Like they leave a, a impressed um, memory in your subconscious mind where you it's a knowing that no that happened like no 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 you you could say i'm crazy if you want to but god darn it that happened now it probably didn't happen where you could see it uh, but i know it happened because i touched it i tasted it, i smelled it i experienced it and so people that think people like this here is crazy so to speak because in their limited way of thinking they haven't never experienced Lord and experience these things but see some of them people like that's on the crazy flow and uh, underneath the bridge in your local city or whatever that's homeless that's stripping us supposedly they're in parallel universes and things are happening there those people are conscious on different levels that the so-called normal people just never experienced just yet then they're not crazy they're experiencing those things is this and it's real to them but a lot of the conscious people that's been conscious for so long, they, they on drugs because, you know, somebody told them that they need to go to the doctor and get that thing checked. Only because nobody in that realm just yet or was in that realm just yet. But now we're in a new age and everybody's starting to see. Everybody's eyes, you know, the veil is lifted and everybody's starting to see and experience different things on different levels. Okay, let's see. Let me see. What's your thoughts on the Bible thus far in your journey? Hi, Queens. The Bible, I feel like the Bible is a story about us. I believe that everybody in the biblical text is us at a different stage in our journey. I believe it all started with us being energy or atom. And it evolved to us becoming the Christ conscious one. That's what the Bible is all about. So at different stages in the Bible, we are going to experience a part of us as Dalton Thomas, part of us as Ezekiel, you know, John, you know, Job losing everything that they have, uh, Jacob wrestling with God and, and then finding out that, you know, he could, he could see God face to face and, and he saw his own face and he realized that he was God. 
and that place that he found God was on pineal in his head right here. It's all us. That's how I look at the Bible. And when we're talking about serpent energy in the Bible, the snake in the biblical text in Genesis, I believe that to be the Kundalini energy rising. And then this is why in the biblical text, I feel as though they say, um, surely you, um, you, if you eat up the apple, so to speak, the serpent said something about if you eat up the apple, you'll be like the other gods. And so basically, <laughs> the serpent was just introducing Kundalini energy, <laughs> consciousness, really. So that's how I look at the Bible. I feel like they have a lot of hidden jewels in it, but I don't believe that the so-called people in church right now know what they're talking about. Even in the book of Revelations, I believe that the pastors don't know how to interpret that book because it's talking about the seven seals, the seven chakra seals, the pools of energy inside of us. The 144,000 is the chosen ones in the physical reality that have all chakra pools of energy open and they are vibrating at a frequency of 144,000 because the petals of the the chakra pool of energy as far as numerology is concerned equals that number i don't think that uh, religion is the key. i believe it's a stepping stone but i don't believe that the religious people you know are conscious on that level just yet and this is why i believe that i believe that it was purposeful though because like it was hidden from them you know it, it's hidden from them so to speak and given to the so-called chosen ones to be able to deliver that message at the appointed time. And it says that in the biblical text, actually. <laughs> he who has an ear, let him hear. You know, it's not for everybody. And this is why I believe that Jesus, um, the in the allegory text, spoke in parables. And um, But I, I love the biblical text. There's nothing wrong with church. There's nothing wrong with you believing in Jesus because it's all purposeful. I used to believe in Jesus. You know, and it was purposeful for my awakening because me believing in Jesus, knowing that I am very inquisitive, knowing that I'm going to research, knowing that I was going to rightly divide that word of truth, it was purposeful for me to believe in that thing because that, that's what got me into research and studying to show myself approved. As a little girl, I used to always read the Bible in my closet because, in my, you know, we were heavily into religion and my mom, you know, we went to choir rehearsal, you know, um, church every service, you know, Sunday school, and we even went on vacations with the church people. <laughs> but in my little youthful mind, I, as an usher in church, because I was an usher, the camera girl, you know, the pastor's assistant, um, I was in the choir and all these things, but I learned so much when I was a pastor's assistant because I heard so much as a little girl and I heard hurting people love on God so much, but they were hurting. And I often said, I didn't want to be like those people when I grew up, but I learned a lot from those people. And I would go home and I would go in my closet and I would read my Bible. And I would actually, in my innocence, pray to God and the devil at the same time. And I would tell them, you know, you two really need to make up because they got people here in the physical reality that are really hurting. Devil, why don't you just make up with God and all, let all of this here stuff go away, you know? Even as I was reading about the Hebrew Israelites, I will often say in my closet, these people remind me of black people. You know, they're so hard headed. And I would tell God, you know, God, I don't know what's going on in this Bible here, but one day I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> one day I'm going to figure this thing out and I'm going to be able to help those people in church because they really do need God. You know, they really love you so much, but I think something is wrong. I think we don't, I don't, I don't think we, we interpreting this Bible right. And I told God that when I was a little girl and, and lo and behold, that was my purpose. That was my calling. <laughs> So I was on this thing since 12 years old and needless to say, I've read since then the biblical text and a lot of spiritual books. I've read the biblical text maybe at least 30 times over and over and over and over and over again when I was a little girl. So I just interpret it differently. I don't look at, I don't look at it as being something outside of us, you know, and it's beautiful when you look at it that way. You know, you, you find you find that it could help you in your right now journey. Because why would a book that everybody in the world have and it not be about none of us in the world? Why would it be about somebody coming to crack the sky and, and save us? Let's just look at it differently. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I hope that answered your question. Uh-oh, what I did? Um... Uh, I think you were my auntie in the past life. I feel so connected to you. <laughs> Who's that? Uh, Joe? 
Joey Apple Six. Okay, yeah, maybe. You never know, babe. That's beautiful. Thank you for that. I thought I was the only one who felt that way. <laughs> I got a lot of nieces out there look like it. That is so cool. That's Aura. That is so cool. That's beautiful. Um, let me see. I remember seeing a dear friend of mine shift from 50 years old to about 18 years old. Yeah, that's beautiful. That is beautiful, Don. Yeah, the mind is powerful. I believe it. I'm at a point in my journey where I, I you know, like, I'm open-minded to believe, you know, and, and this is important, too, in your journey, to always be open-minded, you know, and not cut things off because things are not limited to your little box of thinking, your way of thinking. I'm open to believe, you know, different walks of life and, you know, different things that people say, you know, because you can't, you can't knock people from what they're experiencing in their mind and in their reality, you know. This universe is so boundless and I've seen so many things in, in, in you know, in, in consciousness, in mental, in, in shifting that you, I can't just sit there and say, no, I'm just not going to believe that. Because some of the stories that I tell, people probably be looking at me like, are you serious? And I'm like, yep, yeah, it happened. It sure did. <laughs> I ain't lying. What, what I'm gonna lie to you for? I ain't got time for that. Yeah, see. Uh oh. Uh oh, I didn't hit a button. Why I keep doing that? Let me let me delete this. Okay. Same here. Several times interpretation for me is different and I'm very conscious. That is beautiful. Who is that? W W the Hidden? The Hidden Gem. I see you, Hidden Gem. I like that name. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I believe that too. Do you believe the Adam and Eve story as it's written or the story of creation? No, I don't um I don't believe it as it is written. No, and I don't think that was the um actual creation. I think it was like a recreation. I believe that we've done this many, many, many times over and over again, you know. Just kinda like how um remember like the Noah Noah's Ark or whatever the flooding of the so-called world at that time, you know, I believe that just we just <laughs> We're a collective consciousness and we just Recreate worlds, so to speak and I really feel like a new one is underway, you know with us being in a new age, so No, I don't I believe that we were the darkness that was on the face of the deep the energy that was vibrating when the so-called recreation of the world was you know being made in the biblical text of genesis and we was just ready ready to do the thing again you know because we could move mountains we could be doing half anything and so in this physical reality we just chose because see, see like when you in the so-called bosom of god and have everything can do everything you know, like, and you own this love frequency, you want to experience something, you know, something different. And so this is like a game, like kind of like that we play. That's why <laughs> we never lose. That's, that's why we're always winning and learning. You know, we never get it wrong, no matter what, even when we die, like we, get, we ain't dying, you know? So if we could take that off and, and let go of that fear, which God or source energy didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind, and stay vibrating with the power, love, and sound mind, and know that all is well with us, we we can really enjoy life more and, 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 and um, vibrate at our highest potential of energy because our DNA begins to be altered when we're vibrating on the frequency of love and power with our sound mind that we came forth, you know, as our god state of being yeah it did thank you okay queens let's see i've been feeling like there's that too there's too much out there to box our thinking like religion says yeah definitely definitely i love you oh thank you baby my heart feels fuzzy watching you oh that's so beautiful thank you so much for that i appreciate that babe and i love you back because you're me you're me no matter where you are in your life maybe whether it is a future me, a, a, a older version of myself, I could listen to you all day, Don. Oh, thank you, Don. I appreciate that, babe. Whether it is future me or an old version of myself, yeah, all of us are just reflections of one another on this journey called life. And there's no separation. Okay, did I catch everything? 
Like what you got? Okay, I'm going back. Let's see, your skills got a balance. I did all that. Okay, I wanted to make sure that I got everybody comment. Do all you can, rise, flies, and burn like the phoenix. Yes, I like that. I like that, big, big. I need your love. I need your love. Wait a minute, we all connected to, um, I missed that one there from Marcus. We all, hey, Ross and Melanie, thank you for being here. If you're still up in here. I need your love. We're all connected to the same pool of love. So where I get my love from, you get your love from. You're not void of love. We're never void of love. You have it within. Everything that we need in the physical reality, we have it inside of us already. It's really not nobody else's. It's, 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 it's the collective consciousness. And so we all can take a piece of that pie. And the beautiful thing about taking a piece of that pie is that the pie never, you know, goes away. You know, it never really gets smaller. It gets greater and greater. So if you're looking for love, all you got to do is simply ask your subconscious mind, which is tapped into the superconscious mind or source energy, God, or whatever you want to call it. What does love feel like? That's all you got to do. And there you go. And it'll give you a picture, give you a feeling. How... How does love feel? Show me love. All you gotta do is, because you're God, all you're doing is asking yourself, which is God, a question, and God never asks itself a question that it doesn't already know the answer to. Anything you want is in you. Even when you're with a partner, you think that that is their love that you're feeling, no, it's not. When you're walking down the street, it is not the street that you're feeling, it's your feet. You're only experiencing yourself with everything. Even when I'm speaking to you all, I'm really just speaking to myself here. That's why I call it me talking to my, in my diary, because it's me, me talking to me, because all of you are me, just different versions of me vibrating at a different frequency, but it's all you in your kingdom too. So you're never short of love. You're never short of joy. You're never short of anything. And you have to understand this and know this for yourself before um so rather that you can vibrate at the highest potential of energy so that you can be good for other people because you have to fill your cup up and you're giving other people your overflow your cup need to run it over first so let your cup run it over on love because you have asked your subconscious mind what love is and let it overflow on love and so what you give to your reflections is your abundance is the spill that comes over the cup and then you are good for your reflections. Then you can heal your reflections. You can help your reflections. Don't try to help them when you ain't got no water up in that cup. Mm -mm. You're not good for anything. You can't even start up your car in the physical reality if you don't have no gas up in there. So always do that to, for yourself and to yourself because life is happening through you, not to you. So since it's happening through you, you gotta go to the source and ask the source for what it is that you're needing. You don't need mine. You have yours. We all have the same thing. We have the same hours in this physical reality. We have the same ability to tap into source energy. But that's it. If you're ready, that is when you want to do it. That's when you want to ask the right questions. This is why in the biblical text, it tells us, ask and ye shall receive. The universe is not going to just go ahead and lay these things on your lap. You have to ask the subconscious mind, all knowing what it is that you're wanting, and then you shall receive it. You just got to gear those questions toward what it is you want so you can have that experience. And keep on doing that with the experience, and you're going to overflow with love, and you're going to feel like you don't need no love outside of you, which you really don't, because you are love. You're going to feel like you don't need no joy outside of you. You can feel like you you don't need nobody to call you in the morning and tell you good morning and all this and that and the third because you already know it's good. Because the goodness is in you already. Because you decided already to make it good. Mm -hmm. That's that's when you're empowered. And when you get to that place, ooh, you become unethwittable <laughs> with your energy. When you get to that place, you'll be able to heal people and inspire your people. But 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 even even outside of doing that for other people, you just feel good all over inside of you and you at peace with yourself. And you know the truth. And then the truth gonna set you free. And who that law, that law of that truth sets free is free indeed. And they become a free spirit, a free thinker, a free being. And you that's where you wanna be in your consciousness. You wanna be free. <laughs> Okay, let me go back down here to the bottom and see if I, anybody else coming in. Why I keep doing this here? For some reason, I'm hitting the screen too hard. Okay. Okay, there's too much out there. Okay. 
I read that one. Let me see if they have anything. That's my man, Rasta Melanie. You feeling better, babe? I was thinking about you. I was like, you ain't going nowhere. I, um, I sent some energy your way. I was like, you ain't going nowhere because I got to meet you in the physical reality, Rasta. I am so proud to be a part or connected to you. Yes, brown sugar, same here. That's beautiful. Indeed it is. Exactly, we share the same love instead of draining each other. Yeah, yeah, it's you. Even that orgasm, like, you know, like when you're having sex with somebody, that's your orgasm. That's your experience. You're feeling yourself. You're experiencing yourself. Because if, if you think about it, you could have one without the person being there. <laughs> See, that's, that's how you, I mean, just think about that. Like, you could really have an orgasm without somebody being in a room. You could really love without somebody in the room to love. So what is that you're feeling? Who is that you're feeling when they when they not there? You, your love, your ability to love and allow love to flow through you. That's what it's all about when you understand that though. Hmm. Yeah, from the same source, Don. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me see down here at the bottom. You're welcome, Mel. <sighs> what are your feelings about biological twins and our souls being connected? Well, <laughs> I believe that really we all are connected, really. We're all a big collection of energy. As far as twins are concerned, they're just tapped into maybe a little bit more of a clairvoyancy. They, you know, have a high frequency of hearing and sharing their thoughts and and um, behaviors and looks, you know, on the same frequency. But you could really obtain that with a partner, you know. That's what in the biblical text how they talk about being equally unequally yoked. Well, being equally yoked is just that. When you're in a relationship with somebody and you're sharing the thought, it's a thought wavelength, the physical uh, attraction, you know, the, um, the heart being on the same frequency, you know, it's the like-minded energy, so to speak, just like going back to twins, being connected. That's what equally yoked is. So a twin is like an equally yoked partner, so to speak. Or, you know, some people in physical reality will say um, or believe in um, twin flame, so to speak. Same difference. I believe that they there are many of those. But when we all, what I'm saying here, though, when we all are vibrating at a higher frequency and tapped in or, or all awakening in the physical reality, we all are that big cluster of twins <laughs> because we're all that dark energy that darkness that was on the face of the deep anyway we're all singing that same song anyway but but in this little you know simulated environment we just created just different frequencies for now yeah my twin sister is programmed by the bible and been in a dark place for a while but nothing i do helps the thing that you do to help is stay at your frequency but going back to the cup being full because, okay, remember in the biblical text, when Jesus had um, the lady, the lady that was coming behind Jesus with the issue of blood in the crowded place or whatever, and, and she, she wanted to be healed from the blood issue, and she says, she said if she could just touch the hem of his garment, so to speak. And so the disciples was walking with Jesus in this, this allegory text, and, and it, Jesus gets touched, and he felt a part of him come out and enter into the lady to heal the lady. He says, who touched me? Well, when you add a high frequency, <laughs> you kind of already know the people that need you, that need some of your juice, so to speak, right? And so by him attaining his frequency, you know, because Jesus in the biblical text always meditated based upon the story, right? Always meditated, stayed in a good frequency and saw people through the eyes of God. Well, that's what you do. You stay on that high frequency and see that person, your sister, I think you said. My twin sister's broke. Okay, yeah. Your sister, see her through the eyes of God. See her healed, happy, whole, lovable, and loved already. And you keep your frequency. And allow her to see you in a good place. 
And because you are tuned to your frequency and you you are you are operating at a high frequency, like I said earlier, which alters your DNA. Because if we get real real um, deep into it, melanin per se <laughs> has the power to heal other people around you just by your presence being in the room. So basically, when you attune yourself. Your melanin, your DNA, your God essence inside of you is enough to activate people around you, enough to heal them alone. You know, this is why like some people that have that voice, like that can sing like um, opera music, you know, they make people cry because they have a high frequency when they sing and their voice has an anointing they'll say on it. So all you got to do is be in alignment and have your cup running over and see us through the eyes of God. See her through the eyes of God. Your power in you is going to be the thing that's going to quicken her. And you're teaching her. She's watching you. She's tapped into you. Especially if you're twin, you like minded energy already. She tapped into you. So you could make her thoughts your thoughts. <laughs> but you got to be steady with your thoughts though. You can make her conform to the way that you want her to be, but you got to see her already through the eyes of God. You can't doubt. You can't go down there where she is when she's complaining or when she's depressed or whatever it is that's going on. You can't go down there with her. And when she says something down there, you got to flip it and say, yeah, but isn't it a good day? Yeah, but, but you're going to come out of that. I see you already. That's going to be over real soon or whatever it is. I don't know the depth of that, but you got to stay high. Don't be the Debbie Downer with a girl. I know, I know it's hard, but no, 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 no. Because that means you are tuning your frequency to hers. Now you got to come down and do that. Don't go down there. You stay up. Jesus ain't never went down there. <laughs> so you got to be the Christ conscious one to stay up. To stay up with your frequency. And I say... I was just watching you thinking that too. I need to experience you in physical reality. Yeah, we gonna meet. I already hooked it up, babe. <laughs> I hooked it up in um in my mental roster. We gonna meet. Hey Trey, how you doing, babe? We gonna meet. I already, especially when I um found out you wasn't doing good. I was like, nope, nope. I gotta meet her. Nope, she ain't going nowhere. I like your voice. Oh, I like your support. I really appreciate you, Trey. I appreciate you being here. May, I see somebody put a May up there. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate all the times that you commented on my page to help other people come to my page. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you just being a black man. I love black men, all black men. And I'm going to just share some of my love with you because you are one of the, you and, and my Dion are one of my top supporters. And I really appreciate that. Because there are times, there are days when I be so busy but I try to be consistent and make no excuses and always try to post at least one little thing. And it's sure enough when I turn around, I see my Trey or I see my Dion and I was like, that go my black men. I do love me some black men. I really do. So anyway, from my heart to yours, Trey, I really do appreciate you. No disrespect to you, the lady in your life. If she on here too, I ain't, you know, I don't mean nothing bad, but <laughs> I'm just showing love. Um, let's see. Yes, it's a battle, but I'm still trying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. It's a it's a battle, but you're winning. You're winning the battle. Yeah, let's say it that way. It's a battle, but I'm winning. It's a battle, but I'm learning. It's a battle, but I'm I'm put. I'm better off than what I used to be. It's a battle, but I got this. How about that? Let's say it like that. You know, put some hope on that on the other side of that. But yeah. But we winning, baby. We gonna win this thing. Ain't no, ain't no other way it gonna be. <laughs> yeah, gratitude. I love you too. Oh yeah, I appreciate you, Trey. I don't have one, so oh okay, Trey, stay you lot there. Bless your heart. Okay, I'm down to the bottom. I don't see anything else. But anyway. Like I said, the purpose of this video was to share with you all. Let's stop making excuses. Find something that you could be disciplined about, focus about, because you're going to need it in your journey. Because this journey is mental. I promise you it's mental. It's many, 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 many depths. But you're going to need that mental and be disciplined and find something that you love and go behind that thing that you love and do the thing that you love. I'm doing it. 
I'm doing it and I'm being persistent and you're my reflection and I encourage you to be persistent and leave a good mark behind, leave a legacy behind. So that day on your judgment day, when you judge, judge yourself through your subconscious mind, you'll look back over your life and you'll be able to see that your heart is as light as a feather and that way you'll be able to cross over to the next realm. That's what I want for you because that's what I am doing for me and I want all my reflections to be there every piece of me let's see it's most it most definitely is the real work for the mental yeah okay thank you so much all right that's all i have for today i've been on here long enough oh i did my hour my hour power this video was from my heart to yours baby be blessed thank y'all for being here